As a follow-up of my work on the URAD monitor project, but also due to popular demand, I wanted to come up with a design that can be easily used for a do-it-yourself radiation dosimeter. So I was able to create this PCB using only a single Cooper layer and uh, with true hole components. This is only a prototype, but you can see the nice clean traces with enough space to make assembly easy. It features the SBM20 tube, an LCD screen, in this case it's the Nokia 5110. There's a connector for an Ethernet adapter. It makes little sense to use both the Ethernet adapter and the LCD screen at the same time. If you want a mobile application, you won't be able to have it hooked to your internet router via an Ethernet cable. But for the purpose of this demonstration, let me connect everything together. This is the DC power supply cable. And finally, an Ethernet cable connected to my internet router. At startup there is an initialization phase where uh, an IP is assigned to this unit via the DHCP protocol by my internet router. Finally this is the first screen of the user interface. You see the backlight is on, it will turn off after a timeout. There you go. Uh, the LCD shows a first line with a time counter. Then there is a battery symbol. The idea with the battery symbol and uh, the battery voltage, 3.0 volts, is that in case you want a mobile application and uh, you won't be using an external DC power supply, you can use the bottom space right here for a battery holder where you can uh, connect two AA batteries in series for exactly 3 volts output. So for battery use, the voltage indicator would be useful for letting you know the charge level of your uh, input source of your batteries. The second line shows the total dose as recorded by this device from the moment it was uh, turned on. The central indicator is uh, the last dose readings measured. You see it uh, display the value in microsieverts per hour. The micro multiplier can change to milli or even uh, leave only sieverts per hour for very high doses. That is to maximize the tiny display space. The low label is just a, a hard coded uh, string that is displayed for radiation reaching a certain uh, threshold. It can go from low to normal to high and uh, danger levels. <coughs> the danger level would be above uh, 1 microsievert per hour. The bottom line shows the voltage on the Geiger tube which is set to 380 volts. There is a regulator in place which controls the duty cycle by measuring the output voltage. So the, if the output voltage is too low, the duty cycle will get increased to also increase the high voltage on the Geiger tube. The duty cycle is displayed. It is currently 25%. The last number at the bottom right corner is the CPM and uh, it also features a multiplier that can go from known like uh, it is now to kilo and mega CPM for very high radiation doses. Again this is to maximize the display space we have available. <coughs> there is also a central button on this PCB Pressing the button will uh, toggle the LCD backlight back on, but also take us to the next user interface page. You see the backlight is uh, back on, and uh, this second page shows some uh, absolute readings. You get to see the time, 
the total number of pulses, the absolute average CPM, and uh, the absolute maximum CPM. All these values are computed since the device was uh, first uh, turned on. So there is no persistent storage in this circuit. Uh, all values are measured from time of uh, power on. The last label shows uh, the tube name, uh, but this is hard coded as there is no way of uh, detecting the kind of Geiger tube connected to such uh, device. There is also a third page. And uh, the third page shows the LAN settings. You see the device's IP, the gateway, the net mask, and uh, the IP of the URAD monitor server uh, resolved by uh, DNS. The last line shows the number of pings received. I can use my computer to send a few pings. And you'll see them uh, being counted by our device. Let me show you the screen also. So the pings are being sent one by one and uh, our unit counts them as they go. Using this Ethernet adapter you can also send data to the URAD monitor centralized server very much like the current uh, URAD monitor model A units. This is uh, closer to a uh, model B but with through hole components it's a bit larger but on the other hand it's easier to manufacture for do-it-yourself projects. As said in a similar fashion you can access the device via your local area network so the unit not only shows the details on screen, but it can also send them to the centralized server and finally can also allow you to access them in your local area network. For this, you just need to open the unit's IP in your internet browser. Let me show you the computer screen again. So just opening the IP in your browser will show the readings similar to those on screen. You see the current radiation level, you see the average, you see the voltage on tube and the duty cycle, and the unit's IP in your local area network. There is also the JSON link, which shows all data in a JSON uh, formatted file. You can use this for automation purposes in case you want to read these values for your uh, automation system to have uh, radiation values as well. Getting back to our board, I'll just press the button to go back to the first screen. You've seen that the speaker was muted while in the other two. It doesn't make much sense to have the annoying beeps there, but you want them here as you also see the radiation measurements. Using a radium watch, which has uh, its dials painted with uh, radium based paint, I'll be able to get higher readings. You can hear the clicks increase in frequency. And finally, getting over 1 microsievert per hour, as said, will uh, reach the danger level and uh, the alarm will be triggered. I can press the central button to stop the alarm, but until the average level gets below the alarm thresh point, threshold, uh, the alarm will continue to sound. Getting to the stats page, we see that we had a maximum of uh, 30 counts per minute but uh, the average is uh, below. Let's try to push that even further. If the lamp sounds, we are taken directly to the first screen. You see the indications are now expressed in millisieverts per hour because the numbers are higher and it's more convenient to do it this way. Also the CPM 
has the kilo multiplier again to save space and uh, it will take some time for the values to be averaged down to a level that is below the alarm threshold level let's just press the button to stop the sound at least for a while it's still too high I kept the source close to the unit for too long and uh, there were higher counts it will eventually stop we just need to give it some more time okay so there it is it's back to normal background radiation level the label also states it so and going to the stats page will show an average of uh, 100 and 44 counts per minute and it is decreasing this is also a bit too high for this kind of tube the background uh, radiation level the normal background radiation level should be somewhere close to 20 and uh, the maximum CPM is uh, very high it's over 1000 CPM that is because we've used the dial the radium dial watch to inflict this high number of counts Okay, I'll just turn it off. So I can show you a few more details of the PCB. This is a microcontroller. It uses an Atmel 328 microcontroller. This is the ferrite core transformer for the high voltage inverter. Then there is the speaker. You see that this is not a normal beeper, but one that contains an oscillator to create those uh, high pitch sounds ideal for Geiger clicks or for sounding an alarm there is there is a pin header which is used with a programmer to write the software down to the microcontroller useful for firmware updates this is the regulator that we've used when connecting the external DC power supply to regulate our input down to 3 volts You've already seen the bottom layer and uh, you see that you just need a few components to get this done and having them uh, all through hole and also the PCB designed uh, with uh, spacious uh, traces would make this uh, easy to manufacture. So those of you that are interested will find this as an interesting do-it-yourself project all uh, source code including the PCB and the code for the firmware will be published as open source so those of you that are interested in building one can do so right away having such a device will allow you to contribute to the URAD monitor network as well when using an Ethernet module to upload all data measurements to the user to, to the URAD monitor centralized server thanks for watching and Hope to see your own variants of this board soon.